the game for the Colonials in overtime. And welcome to this week's episode of Colonial Sports Center. I'm your host, Greg Sutton. And I'm John Hanna. Jack O'Brien, not here today. He has the strep throat, so glad to be filling in for him today. I'm glad you're here too, John. We have a couple other people in the studio tonight. That's right. Uh, Tyler Gell is going to be sitting down with Holly Forbes of the women's basketball team. And speaking of that basketball team, they started their season at the UPMC Event Center. But and so did the men's team, taking on cross-city rival Pitt. But speaking of cross city rivals, there was an even bigger one on the gridiron this weekend. Exactly. RMU took on Duquesne University this past Saturday at Joe Walton Stadium, and both teams have come into this game in conference Undefe undefeated. Yes, John. it was a big game, and it's always exciting to see something like that because they're so close together. But yet again, this game makes it all the difference because this could potentially make the difference for the championship. Yes, it could. And so why don't we go, not to cut you off, yeah, John, okay, but why don't we go to Joe Walton Stadium to see how these two teams played it out. All right, so Colonials, Dukes, here we go. We're going to start off this one here with a run. QB sneak, first touchdown. Robert Morris goes up early. Big time thing here in an undefeated game. Touchdown pass for the Colonials as well, just breaking the plane. And right after that touchdown, let me cut you off here, uh, onside kick by Coach Clark. And that was a bold move in the first quarter. Yes, it was. It was reposted by CBS Sports. Yes, and Mason Gray here, pick six. And that wasn't the only one, finishing with the, the sprinters lean there at the end, kind of like they do in the Olympics, jumping the fourth quarter of the play. At this point, game's kind of out of hand for Duquesne. They're running out of opportunities here. Another one by Mason Gray. He will run this one back for about 81 yards, I do believe was the number that he ran that back for. 81, yeah, that's a, that's a long. And I he mean, made it happen, too. He some great, his some great blockers blocks there. And he made it coast to coast, sideline to sideline, whatever you want to call it, in for that touchdown. This kind of shored things up for Robert Morris, but Terrence Stevens also did a little work with his legs, running that one in for around 30, 40 yards for a touchdown. Colonials would go on to win 41 21, one of the only two perfect teams left in the NEC. That's right, and great performance by that entire Colonials team. But uh, after that, uh, there were a couple of big players for the Colonials, obviously, Mason Gray, uh, and he did win some awards as well after that. So. Let's just take a look at the award that he won. Uh, obviously, we're going to see here that Mason. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, after the game, Coach Clark uh, was at practice, obviously, as he should be. But Logan Carney of Army Central Media sat down with him and Mason Gray to discuss last week's game and to preview this upcoming one against the undefeated CCSU Blue Devils. The Robert Morris football team is ready to take on Central Connecticut State University this weekend with the winner clinching the NEC title. RMU Century Media talked to Mason Gray and Coach Clark of the Robert Morris football team at their practice on Wednesday. Coach Clark, obviously um, you've had some time to process the win that happened on Saturday. Um, now that you've known a couple of days, well, just how important has that win been for you? Well, it was huge for the program more than anything else. Uh, the fact that we were able to come in here, something on the line, and come out with a victory was real good. Uh, just getting back to normal, um, not staying too high. We only had 24 hours to enjoy that win, so just locking in and really uh, learning what CCSU does and uh, studying up. Well, the biggest thing, we're just going to take it one play at a time like we always talk about. We want to have consistency. We want to make sure we can carry over that consistency we had on Saturday and do a little bit more this week. Just got to make sure our guys are doing what things are asked to do. We don't want anybody to do anything bigger than they need to. Let's just do what's cap uh, what you're capable of. Let's just do your job and let's play hard. Uh, yeah, it definitely means something to us, but uh, we feel as though we haven't done anything yet. Uh, we feel as though if we don't win this game, it, it all doesn't mean anything because it's, it's, it's Without a championship, it doesn't mean anything. So uh, 
just refocusing and getting the whole team to know that and and really focusing on that is the biggest thing about this week. I can't say I, will. I can't say I did. It's one of those situations where myself and the coaches, it's something that you always wish for. You're hoping the culture changes and the guys catch on to what you're doing, but you never really know what's going to happen. So it's a big surprise for us. Yeah, 100 percent. I felt as though we were going to win every game coming in. Uh, I knew we had a lot of transfers. I knew we had a lot of players, uh, a lot of players that I already knew that were here. So I knew that we had the talent. It was just about uh, bonding together and uh, gelling and really getting the um, whole team on one page. The Robert Morris football team is looking to clinch their first NEC title since 2010. This has been Logan Carney reporting for Mario New Century Media. Thank you, Logan. And as I alluded to before that, uh, Mason Gray, two touchdowns of two picks, two pick sixes, obviously. And he actually earned himself some hardware through the NEC. Yeah, he did. And that's huge for a transfer. He came in uh, this past uh, offseason to yes, Robert Morris. Had, but he did have experience with Coach Clark, obviously, playing for him under Albany. But let's take a look. Yeah. So just some great stats. NEC Defensive Player of the Week, two interceptions for two touchdowns, 117 yards he ran those back for. And the one thing it doesn't mention here is that he also had a forced fumble recovery in this game, which is huge. The RMU defense was unstoppable last week when it came they to Duquesne, and hopefully they can do the same yeah, thing against CCSU. Six turnovers for that game. But speaking of CCSU, let's take a look at how they've played each other decently over the past couple uh, years. But both going into this game in New Britain, Connecticut, 5-0. and First time Colonial has been 5-0 and since 2010. That's wild because that's right when they won their last NEC championship. Yes, so it that's is. huge considering what they're doing so far and seeing that culture from Joe Walton, a couple rough years there with Banazak, and now bringing yes. it back. It's good to see. Exactly but that Let's take as a well. look at the tail of the tape between these two teams. And obviously, if you look at the non-conference record, Central Connecticut vastly superior, nine and one compared to Colonial six and four. But it's that second stat that is the important one. Yeah, exactly. And over the course of I think it's around thirteen years, we've been playing. It's been the fourteenth match between the two. Robert Morris has won seven of six or seven of thirteen games. Mike, excuse me, but. Robert Morris is 1-5 on the road against CCSU. So that's going to be tough to see, seeing the Colonials are ahead in the overall matchups. But it's going to be tough for Robert Morris to travel to Connecticut in order to, uh, to get this win this week and stay undefeated. Yes, it is. Speaking of undefeated teams, the Robert Morris volleyball team was in action over the past week over against Central Connecticut, believe it or not. Uh, they were looking for their first NEC championship win since 2008 and Head coach Dale Starr looking for his 300th career win. So let's take a look at the stats from that game to see how they would do. And the Colonials would edge this one out 3-2. to two. Uh, Their first ever game in NEC play this year that went to five sets. So CCSU giving them a bit of a tough, gi tough gig. But Emma Granger for the Colonials tied a program record with 26 kills and set one with 33 points in the match. Great performance from her. And... I mean, they couldn't relax long as they were in, back in action the very next day, right, Greg? Exactly so, Johnny Hanna. And the thing is, is it's crazy because right as soon as the football game finished up over Joe Walton, people were hustling over to the new UPMC Event Center to get a peek at St. Francis Brooklyn, the Terriers, versus their home, Robert Morris Colonials, right after that football game. And we're going to get to see if uh, Robert Morris was able to put a leash on the Terriers, I or if the, uh, the Terriers yeah. were going to break through the fence and go wandering around the neighborhood here. So let's jump into it. Colonials swept the match. No problem for the Colonials here. Emma Granger, 12 kills this game, 14 and a half points. Warren I mean, Kalinick, 12 When a game's not going to five sets, you can't expect those sort of stats. But. Very true. But on the other side of the net for the Terriers, Ali Spuick, seven kills, two digs. Angeli, 17, or 18 assist in five digs and the Colonials just dominant as they have been through this entire conference play. They have two more games left uh, but we'll preview that or we'll get to those a bit later but what do we have coming up after the break? A bunch of stuff like we said earlier we have Tyler Gallo sitting down with Miss Forbes here in studio talk a little bit about the, the opening of the women's basketball season and much much more that you're not going to want to miss here on Colonial Sports Center. Hey dad I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the waters. Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. 
Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad? Do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. <laughs> After coming off a close loss to the Marshall Thundering Herd over the past weekend, the Robert Morris Colonials traveled to South Bend, Indiana to take on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Uh, Colonials were looking to really put a mark on their season against a really tough opponent before coming back here. But let's take a look at the highlights from the Jack to see if the Colonials could edge this one out over the Fighting Irish. Here we go here, Colonials Fighting Irish. And we're going to start this off here with a layup here by Jawan Durham. He's going to put Notre Dame up early. And now a drive by Robbie Cromarty, foul by Savion McEwen. And now again, Dane Goodwin, great jumper there, just past the paint. Put the or put uh, Notre Dame up by 18. Now, drive by TJ Gibbs is going to be slammed by Nate Leshevsky. And now, Prentice Hub is going to do it all by himself. That looks like you and pickup, Greg, over there. And now, uh, Prentice Hub again with a three. And now, some, it's going to be some really nice passing here by Notre Dame as Rex Fluger is going to find John Mooney for the layup. And as we go into the half here, it's going to be 39-20 Notre Dame. And now, here's Fluger again. He's going to pass it to Hub, who has a deep three, three of six from beyond the arc in that game. John Mooney is going to muscle down there for a layup. And a cross-court pass again here for Hub for three. Wide open here, well, a bit of pressure, but still wide open. And now a defensive breakdown is going to lead to an easy dunk here for Durham as the Colonials drop this one 92 to 57 to the Fighting Irish. And the men's basketball team kicked off their inaugural basketball game in the UPMC Event Center. The Colonials also started their season with a big rivalry game, with the first game being against the Pittsburgh Panthers. The Event Center was sold out for the matchup. Steelers wide receiver Juju Smith Schusto was also in attendance. Let's go to the People's Court to see what verdict would, be, be, would happen between the Colonials and the Panthers. First, we're going to see here an alley-oop uh, dunk here by Trey McGowan. Then we're going to jump to the Colonials with the ball and a quick layup there by DJ Russell. And one, by the way, off the foul. And we're going to see T Trey McGowan all over the court today with a steal and the runaway dunk, giving the or bringing the gap closer between the Colonials and the Panthers. Here we're going to see the Colonials pass it outside for a three from downtown to Charles Bain. Charles Bain, not usually a guy you'd like to see if shooting from distance, but, but if, if he gets a wide open look like he just them, had, why not? Exactly that. Exactly. And as of lately, Bain, cash He's, money. But usually you don't see a big man shoot like that. Yeah. Uh, but game is changing, John Hanna, yes, as we all is. know. And, Really, from here on out, it's just a highlight reel for Pitt. Three after three after three after three, kind of cementing their victory here. Now up 62 to 49 over Robert Morris. Trying to double team, doesn't help. Light coverage on the outside, still bangs at home. The Panthers would end up giving the UPMC Event Center their, its first loss in its history, uh, 71 to 57. That's, well, hopefully things would be better as for the women's basketball team. After a tough loss against the Big 12's Texas Christian University, the Colonials ventured to Philadelphia, beautiful Philly, the city of brotherly love, <laughs> to, to see if they could conquer the LaSalle Explorers. Let's take a look at the stats here from uh, Philly. As the Colonials would edge us out in overtime, 71-68. NECA Izebo, 21 points for the Colonials, uh, but 
uh, for the Explorers, as you see, Kayla Sproul, 19.7 rebounds, almost as good as Azebo, but not quite. Nina Augustin, 14.8 rebounds, and tonight's guest, Holly Forbes, 12 points, five rebounds in that one for the Colonials. And for the Explorers again, Jordan Lewis, 10 points, six rebounds, but not enough. Colonials win in overtime. And after that overtime victory against LaSalle, Robert Morris was back in action to take off their cross-border rivals this time from Youngstown State, the Penguins. Now, would the Robert Morris Colonials be sliding all over the ice? And would the Penguins be loving the Arctic weather that's been happening around here in Moon Township? We're going to have to find out. Let's take a look and see how the Colonials fared against the Penguins. And the Colonials, again, another win. 58-43 over the Penguins. For the Penguins, Mary Dunn, 12 points, 6 rebounds. McKenna Peters, 11 points, 4 rebounds. Chelsea Olsen, 7 points, 11 rebounds. 11 is a kind of recurring number here. 11, 11, 11. <laughs> Make a wish because the Colonials are defending their NAC title. But Neka Izebo, 17 points, 12 rebounds. Esther Castillo, 12 points, 3 assists. And Holly Forbes back on the stat sheet again, 8 points and 4 rebounds. And now we're going to send it over yeah. to Tyler Gallo, who's with Holly Forbes. Tyler, what do you have for us today? Thanks, John. And yes, I am here with Holly Forbes from the women's basketball team, fresh off of that 53-48 win against Youngstown State. So thank you for coming here tonight, Holly. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. And uh, you originally, you're from Missouri, uh, and you went to Mineral Area College. Uh, why did you transfer to RMU of all schools? So Mineral Area College is a junior college, so you only had two years there. And I knew I wanted to play at a four-year school, so after our season ended, I was going around, flying to different schools, and RMU just felt like it was the best fit. Yeah. All right, and uh, how did your experience at Mineral Area College uh, prepare you for the basketball atmosphere here at RMU? I feel like it was a really good stepping stone, and like we played the pack line like Coach does here, so I feel like that was a good way to help me get ready. That and amongst a bunch of other things, like he helped me. I thought I was a hard worker before in high school, and then I went to Mac, and Coach was like, no, you need to be getting in the gym more, getting reps, like this isn't enough, so I feel like he really helped me to get to this level. Yeah, and then what's been the biggest difference between the two schools since you've come here? I would say how in depth that we go with things here. Like, we at my old school, we'd do film for like 30 minutes, and now we'll do film for like an hour, an hour and 30 minutes, and stuff like that. And we just go over everything so in depth, like practice film, their film, and then just all around, just going more in depth. Yeah, so. I've heard it's been pretty in depth uh, at the school. And I would be, uh, well, you have to describe your style of play to me. I mean, like, what do you bring to the table here at RMU? I would say the biggest thing that I bring to the table is strength, like I'm getting in there and getting rebounds and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's what I would say that I bring to the table here. Good. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention your brother, Drew. You know, Steelers and Browns playing tonight. He was uh, drafted by the Browns. Uh, how has he helped you both grow as an athlete and as a person in your life? Well, I mean, we were always just so competitive growing up, and it was really neat him going through the recruitment process the yeah. same time that I was. So it was like he was flying out to go to see a pro team, and I was flying out to go on a visit. Yeah. And, like, we'd just talk about it, and we'd connect there, and he would give me some advice, and it really just helped that we were going through the same process at the same time. It was really yeah. neat. Yeah, that's, that's – it's, I mean, it seems pretty neat, especially in the NFL and all that, you yeah. know. And uh, has there been any pressure on you to come to RMU and perform right out of the gate? Oh, for sure, like – I remember people were like, oh, she can't play Division One basketball, and like, obviously I wanted to prove everybody wrong. Yeah, exactly. So that's when I came here, and I was like, I want to show those people, like, yeah, I can play Division One basketball, and I belong here. So, yeah. yeah. Well, we mentioned you're from Missouri. I'm from Delaware. It's pretty far away, five hours. Nothing near close to Missouri, but uh, what is it like going to school so far from home? It's really different because my junior college was only 15 minutes from my house, so yeah. I was just used to... You know, after a game, I'd go out to eat with my family, and then, like, I'd go home and do my laundry. So you definitely can't do that being nine yeah, exactly. hours from home. But FaceTime always helps. Yeah, it does. So. Um, that's what I've learned uh, so far here. <laughs> so uh, once, once again, thank you so much for sitting down with me today, uh, Holly Forbes from the women's basketball team. We'll send it back to the desk. Right after this break, we will be talking about some hockey as the men's and women's hockey team were in action. We will see you right back here on Colonial Sports Center. Hey, Dad. I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um. Will you go to prom with me? Yes. <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior. 
will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies, nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! And welcome back to the Colonial Sports Center. And after a week of rest after playing Penn State, the men's hockey team hit the ice again in Buffalo, New York, John's native area, to face the Canisius Golden Griffins. Robert Morris was sitting one game below 500. The Colonials team would be facing their third conference opponent on the year. Who would come away with the victory? Let's peek in and find out. The Colonials came out on top over the Griffins on this one. Nick Perkusic, one goal with an assist. The top scorer for Canisius was Blake Wareheim with one goal. No other points, just a goal. Brandon Michelin, if I'm saying that McKellian. correct. McKellian, thank you. You're welcome. One goal and Justin Kappelmaster, 39 saves. Couldn't get it past him except for maybe one or two times, John. But, yeah, it was, but it was a home and home, so Colonials had another chance. After winning the first game of the home-and-home home against Canisius in Buffalo, talking proud, talking proud, the Colonials traveled down the I-90 to take the Golden Griffins on their turf. Well, ice, if we're being specific, at Neville Island. Let's check out the highlights from that one. And the Colonials, oh, that's Linden one, excuse me. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but the Colonials would win that one 4-2. to two. Brendan McCallion, as we take a look here. Uh, there we go. Colonials Griffins now. And we're going to start this off here with two absolutely beautiful behind-the-back passes. And it's going to be Grant A. Bear that is going to put this one home. Barshevsky, no chance for him on this one. Couldn't cook up the save, John. And that wasn't even just behind the back. It was through the legs no, behind it was. the back. And we're going to have some more pretty passing here as it's a wrister by Brendan McKellion, who is a defenseman, wires it. AJ Defensive Player of the Week. And now it's going to be A. Bear and Coleman on a rush here. And it's going to be put in by A. Bear. 3 nothing Colonials as we head into some great goaltending on the Colonial side. Justin Kappelmaster, one of 36 saves here, is going to rob Simone Gravel on that one. Into the second period now, Colonial is up 3 nothing, And a power play. Luke Lynch is going to unleash a bomb on the power play. Colonials win this one 4-2. Some late goals by Matt Long and J.D. Pogue for the Golden Griffins. And after the weekend sweep against the Penn State Nittany Lions, the women's hockey team was back on the road to play the Lindenwood in Missouri. This would be the first time this season that they would play a conference opponent in back-to-back -back weekends. This could show us early on how their conference play this season could play out in their quest for a CHA crown. And the Colonials looking good against their second conference opponent in the Lions, winning 2 to nothing. Lexi Templeman with a goal and the leading scorer for Lindenwood. I see what you did there. What was Crown. that? Crown. Lions of the King of the Jungle. You're, tr you're right. I didn't plan that, but good pickup. I was <laughs> unintentional on my part. But the Colonials come down with this one with that 2-0 victory. First back-to-back -back back -back weekend series for the Colonials looking pretty good, John. Well, speaking of back-to-back, -back, following the 2-0 win in their first game against Lindenwood, the Col Robert Morris Colonials team was back in action in the Show Me State, looking to show the rest of the conference what they were made of, playing their fourth straight CHA, looking for their fourth straight CHA win, excuse me. Let's head to the highlights from the brand new Centen Community Ice Center to see if the Colonials can tame the Lady Lions. And we're going to start this off here with a great play here. Sierra Burt is going to dangle the absolute jockstrap off the Colonials defender, go up one nothing, beat Reagan Kirk, and now Madden's instead. Seemingly easy wrister is going to put Lindenwood up 2-0. They beat RMU 6-1 last year. 
And now Lillian Marchant is going to drive, beat Reagan Kirk stick side. And after this goal, Reagan Kirk was pulled in favor of Ariel Desmet, but that would put the spark the Colonials needed. Emily Harley on the power play is going to score there to bring the Colonials back within two. It was a forward last year. 3-1 heading into the third. Colonials power play again. J.C. Gebhardt is going to be Annika Ostlin short side. Fourth best power play in the NCAA for the Colonials. And Gebhardt just three back of Brittany Howard for most points all time. And Emily Harley again down low. CHA player of the week and now into overtime. And this is a shot you do not want to be in front of. Emily Curlett is going to unleash an absolute bomb to beat Annika Ostland. Colonials win this one 4-3 to three in overtime. Four straight CHA wins. And that's huge being so early in the season, John. But why don't we jump right into our games to watch. And this week, the big game for me is going to be on the football field Saturday when the Colonials travel up to New Britain, Connecticut to take on Central Connecticut State University, who is also undefeated in conference play this year. Up to this point the season, the Blue Devils have only lost one game, and that was against Eastern Michigan, who is in the MAC. The favor is definitely in CCSU's side of the court with them only losing that single game against Eastern Michigan. Historically though, the Colonials have won seven of the 13 matchups between these two teams, but the downside to that tale of the tape is the fact that Robert Moore struggles on the road winning only one game. But the player to watch, for, I know you have it on there, but Mason Gray, he played lights out last week against Duke. The thing is, is Mason Gray is seeing things a quarterback doesn't even know they're looking at. No. Almost as Sam Darnold would say, he's almost seeing ghosts out there. I know. <laughs> Aaron, I hope maybe Aaron Winchester will be seeing some ghosts there for CCSU. He has had a great season so far. And he thrives through the air, which could be a strong point for this Robert, Moore de Robert Morris defense, which murdered the passing game last weekend. Four interceptions. J not only the two for Mason Gray, but four in total. Exactly. And Mason Gray had 117 yards on two interception returns. It's almost time to put him in wide receiver, John. I mean, you never know. Uh, <laughs> George Martin played pretty well in the passing game for the Colonials, and Garrett Hauser, freshman receiver, has been pretty good for them as well. Yeah, and John, with this excitement, I haven't, the amount of games I've won in a row in conference this year has been the amount of games that I've seen Rob Morris football win in three years, in my, uh, my tenure, as you want to say here. So That's, it's kind of exciting. It's exciting yes, to see this is. team put up so many wins. Yes, it is. But for my game, I'm taking it to, I'm taking it to the ice. You like the gridiron, I like the ice. Colonials will look to ground Bentley in their men's hockey. They've already played two games against Bentley. They're looking for the, to sweep the Falcons this time. And the last time these two faced was just last month. Colonials set, swept the Falcons by a combined score of 7-1 to one at Neville Island. Nick Perkusik and Aiden Selsey had the two goals for the Colonials on the weekend. And my player to watch, Yakov Novak, for uh, actually a draft pick of the Senators, believe it or not. So a uh, bit of pro level there. But he scored the lone Falcons goal in that one. But for Colonials... For Robert Morris, in net, Ferris State transfer Justin Kaplmaster is really the player to watch. He's fifth in the NCAA with a 1.62 goals against average and a save percentage at 9.58. And last week, Canisius, Kaplmaster, 75 out of 77 saves. We saw him make that great save in that second game, 94.9 save percentage in that one. And, John, it's ex – it's – it's amazing to see RMU being able to get this talent, such as Capital Master, just to be able to dominate their conference as they are right now. Not even in conference, but playing at the level they're at is what I wanted to say. Yes, it is. And I think, honestly, overall, this UPMC Event Center has helped all the teams. You're seeing volleyball do great. Hockey's are doing great. I know they play at the island. <laughs> Football's doing great. It's just an insane amount of greatness coming out of these teams this year. Something I haven't, I'm only a sophomore, but something I haven't seen this uh, last year. And speaking of greatness, John, why don't we look at the game's upcoming... Oh, my apologies. We don't have that for you. But in football, let's talk about that. Gridiron, one of my favorite things. I think, unfortunately, with that tail of the tape that we talked about earlier, Robert Morris only winning one against CCSU on the road. I think they dropped the game here um, See, to CCSU. I'm a bit more optimistic. I said it last week on... Or yesterday, excuse me, on Sports Talk in the Berg. I'm going to stick my pr stick by my prediction. Colonials are going to win this one 21 to 20. See, I think it's going to be a little bit different than that, John. As I said, I think CCSU is going to come out on top. I'm going to give the final score of around 35 to 21 uh, in, in the Blue Devils' favor. And I just think that because... CCSU is playing even better than Robert Morris is this year. They have throughout their entire season. But They're nine it's only one. one game. One game can dictate an entire season. And I understand that, John. But we, I think we lose that. I think not we, but as Robert Morris, I think they lose that uh, advantage there whenever they lost that game to the Division II Kentucky State. 
I well, think that makes it makes a break this game specifically. I think that Kentucky State team is really the catalyst for this entire year because after they lost that, they've just been on a tear. I think it finally woke something up in them because they've they've had a history of dropping games to D2, Division two schools. So I think that's gonna be the big difference. But that's all the time we have here in Rob or Colonial Sports Center. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week for the final episode of this semester. Come on back next week. <laughs>